uh, uh, thanks for the invitation. So, um, yes, I'm going to talk about calabion manifolds with maximum volume growth. So, uh, let me see. So, um, first, the introduction. So, um, in this talk uh, by calabion manifolds, I mean a uh, Ricci flat Keller manifolds. And so, a uh, calabion manifold with maximum volume growth is a complete non compact. Ricci flat Kähler manifolds, um, and it satisfies uh, certain volume growth assumption. So I, I will talk about um, all the keywords uh, in detail later. So, um, so because this talk we will focus on the complete non-compact case, uh, but it, it's better to mention that in the in the compact case uh, we have this uh, groundbreaking result by uh, Xing Tong Yao. So um, in 1978, uh, Yao uh, solved the Calabi conjecture. So um, basically, um, he proved that the existence of uh, Ricci flat Kähler metrics on com compact Kähler manifolds is guaranteed by the topological condition that is the vanishing of the first Chen class. So in particular, he proved that for every Kähler class, um, if you know that the compact Kähler manifold satisfies uh, this topological condition, then you can find a, a Ricci flat Kähler metric within that Kähler class, and that metric is unique within that Kähler class. So he he proved the existence and uniqueness. And um, so so Ricci flat Kähler metrics on compact Calabian manifolds have many applications in geometry and physics. However, they are almost always not explicit. So uh, except uh, when uh, say you have the, the flat torus or certain uh, extreme cases, um, we don't know how the Calabian metrics look like. So, uh, but uh, in one particular case, we, we almost know how uh, these metrics look like. That is the case when you're uh, your compact Calabian manifold is close to a singular Calabi-Yau variety. So when your your Calabian manifold is very close to degenerate, that that means uh, the the manifold stops uh, starts to develop singularities. The near the singularity near the de degenerating region, um, you you have you 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 can actually say more about uh, the the metric behavior. And in particular, in the non-collapsing case, um, uh, the degenerating region is modeled by uh, complete Calabian manifolds. Um, and in in the complete non-compact case, uh, actually, we have uh, a lot of uh, explicit uh, Calabian manifolds that are obtained post uh, a large group of symmetries and you reduce the, the very complex partial differential equation to an ordinary double point uh, sorry an ordinary differential equation and then you just solve the ODE or you can do uh, you can perform uh, certain gluing constructions to construct uh, semi-explicit Calabia metrics so in in this talk I will give an overview of some recent existence and uniqueness results of Calabian manifolds with maximum volume proof. So uh, first let's uh, define what is a Calabian manifold. So uh, X omega is said to be a Calabian manifold if X is a complex manifold with complex dimension N and omega is a Ricci flat Kähler metric on X. So uh, so being Kähler means that this omega is the closed two form, such that if you write it in terms of local holomorphic coordinates, uh, you can write it as uh, this right hand side. So, um, so in particular, it's a one-one form. So it's a, like a DZJ wedge DZ bar K, and and the, this coefficient G J K bar it is a 
positive definite termination matrix. Uh, matrix. So this is the definition of a killer matrix. And in the killer case, uh, you can you can turn the Ricci tensor into a a, a, a symmetric, uh, sorry, a, a differential two form using the complex structure. And once you do that, uh, the Ricci curvature actually admits a very simple uh, formula. So it is given by minus um, I times uh, del del bar of log of the determinants of the matrix uh, G J K bar. So Ricci Ricci flat means that the Ricci curvature is equal to zero. So so this is our definition of the Calabria manifold. But in many situations, we consider, uh, I think, in, in the examples that are going to dis discuss later, uh, actually, um, there exists a holomorphic volume form. So that is this capital omega. Uh, it, is the, uh, it is the trivialization of the uh, canonical bundle Kx. So uh, in local coordinates, uh, it is written as uh, some nowhere vanishing homework function f of z times uh, dz1 wedge, wedge all the way to dzn. So this is a this is what we mean a homomorphic volume form. So in particular, the 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 canonical bundle is trivial. And if we are given this homomorphic volume form, then we require uh, this omega this little omega to satisfy the complex Mongean pair equation. So it is, it is given by this omega wedge to the nth power. Uh, uh, it is equal to this capital omega wedge, capital omega bar up to some constant. So this, uh, this basically means that uh, the volume form of the Keller metric omega is prescribed by the holomorphic volume form on uh, this capital omega. Now uh, let's turn to the maximum volume growth condition. So this is a purely Riemannian notion, but for the context here, I, I will um, assume that our manifold is Calabian manifold. So um, we, we say a Calabian manifold is uh, have has maximum volume growth if there exists a constant uh, this kappa such that for any point in your manifold and any uh, R, the radius R, we have that the, the volume of the ball uh, with center P and radius R, this volume is bounded from below by kappa times R to the uh, 2N. So this 2N is the real dimension of the manifold X. So, so roughly speaking, this means that X, um, if you if you fix a point in your manifold and you 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 try to in, increase the the radius of your ball, then this manifold would look like uh, it will it will grow like a cone, uh, at least in the volume sense. So this is um, this is the the volume growth assumption that we will put on the the Calabian manifolds in in this talk. So actually, this uh, this assumption seems very abstract and very weak, but actually it has um, a very strong consequences. So um, so this is a this is a Riemannian geometry technique. So um, that that's fix um, a sequence of positive number r i that goes that go to infinity and the point p inside. The, the manifold X. Then that's considered a sequence of um, Calabian manifolds. So that's denoted Xi, Omega I, and Pi. So, so these Xi's are just X and Pi's are just P. But we rescale the metric Omega I. So this Omega I is given by uh, the Omega, but you scale down by this Ri to the minus two factor. So you should imagine that um, if you move along the sequence, the, the distance between any two points will become smaller and 
Mueller and some compact parts, compact region of Germanville will, will get uh, uh, squished down, squeezed down in so, so um, the, the point is that you, you, once you have this sequence of uh, Calabria manifolds, then after you pass to a subsequence, uh, it will converge in the pointed gromov hausdorff sense to a complete metric space. And such space is called a tangent cone and affinity. So uh, later on, I will have a more uh, uh, explicit picture for, for this uh, rather abstract description. So now comes the, the very important regularity theory for on, on this Riemann convergence theory. So, so the, the regularity of limits due to Anderson cheer coding and cheer coding Tian, um, they combining their results, we, we, we know that uh, any tangent cone and affinity of a club manifold Hega, is a metric and more G flat killer. And I will have real cool dimension at least four so be very very small and furthermore uh, by the results of Donaldson Swan and views we know uh, actually these cones and infinities are actually at rare varieties so that means you can, um, so, so by Calabria cone here, uh, I dis discussed this regularity. I just, uh, you have, uh, uh, but um, in this, uh, you know, actually it's a singular speed in bet the, the tangent cone to some CN using holomorphisms. And let me mention that um, so tangent cones and infinity of a Calabria manifold maximum long growth are actually uh, expected to be unique. So uh, actually, we know uh, when if, if one tangent and infinity is uh, has smooth cross section, then uh, the tangent must be. Or if you know that x if x is already and F on variety, then the tangent cone and affinity is also unique. So uh, you may wonder why um, the tangent cone could be non-unique. Uh, it is because in 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 the definition of a tangent cone and affinity, uh, we we actually have choices when we pick uh, the sequence R i. So uh, a priori. The limit you get depend on R, but um, in many cases we know that the tangent cone uh, doesn't depend on the sequence. That now, uh, before I move to um, more complicated examples let me look at one one very concrete examples that is called the stash so so the let's first consider a singular variety that is the ordinary so this x0 it's fine using this uh, tick polynomial x1 square all the way to x plus one square so this uh, it has an ordinary point at the origin. So this uh, singular space, you can actually write down the labial cone metric. So, and the metric uh, DD bar function R square by this, the, the modulus of X raised power. And this satisfies the modern pair equation. So this R square, um, this R 
if you take the square root of this r square, you get r. So this r is actually the distance to the vertex, which is the the origin. So this is a Clavio. Uh, this x zero is a Clavio cone with Clavio cone metric omega zero. Now that's considered the system of a double point for e not equal to zero. We make the right hand side equal to t. t. So now x t is a smooth, um, smooth complete uh, non compact manifold. Uh, I should say it's a smooth non compact manifold. So Stanzo shows that uh, there exists an S O M plus one invariant complete or that's uh, for convenience and that's right the metric as omega st so it is given by uh, d bar of um, f of the function of x square and this f is as important to uh, the, the potential of the cone metric as x goes to infinity. So when n is equal to two, this is the evidence. So you, once you do the heavy period rotation, this moving becomes the, the small resolution. And this one, and uh, okay, so in when n is equal to two, every double point is just the uh, singularity C. So did we lose the connection? Yes, we lost him. The connection was, I think, very bad. Uh, let's wait that he comes back. I, sorry, I, I think I, I, I lost the connection. Yeah. Can you hear me? Yeah, we can hear you. Uh, I'm so sorry. Uh, where did I? Where did you uh, lose me? So, uh, did I cover this page? No, you didn't. I didn't. Uh, like not at all. Okay, but how about this one? Yes, yes, but when, but even yes, the, yes. The, the other one, you you at least started covering it. Uh, right? Oh, I just started. Okay, I'm so sorry. So, um, so I will give you a very concrete example, the ordinary double point. So this X zero is defined using this quadratic polynomial. So at the origin, uh, you have the ordinary double point singularity. So you can easily write down a um, explicit club outcome metric on X zero. So it is given by this omega zero that is dd bar of the function r square. Here, r square is given by um, x to the two times n over n minus one. And, and furthermore, it, it satisfies the, the complex margin pair equation where the holomorphic volume form is, um, is given by this formula. And this follows from the Poincare residue formula. So this is a singular uh, variety, but now you you smooth you smooth it. So you you make the right hand side now zero. So now you get a smooth manifold. So the the result by Stanislaw is that there exists an SOM plus one invariant complete Calabria metric on X one, and it's given by the formula omega st is equal to dd bar of a function f, where f is a function of x squared. 
And if you, um, so you, you get this function f by, uh, first you, you reduce the, this horrible complex modern pair equation using this, using the symmetry S O M plus one, you reduce it into an ODE and then it becomes a, an equation for F, then you solve uh, for F. And, and if you study the solution carefully, you see that when X goes to infinity, we have this asymptotic. So F is uh, getting closer to the, this function, which is the, the, the potential of the co-metric. And if you specialize to the case when n is equal to two, then the, the space x t is just the, the Eckerd Hansen space after hypercalar rotation. And in the in the complex two, two dimension case, uh, the ordinary double point is just uh, the quotient singularity, uh, C two mod by Z two. And and because of that, x one is um, it, it's called asymptotically locally Euclidean. Because um, x one is asymptotic to this uh, this cone, and in general, x one is asymptotically uh, conical. So I will abbreviate it as AC in in the rest of the talk. And so actually, there exists an explicit map uh, that's just remember this is explicit that goes from um, x0, the cone, and infinity uh, away from the vertex. So you, you remove this ball of radius one to the manifold x1, such that if you pull back the, the, the manifold metric using this different morphism, and you compare it with the, the cone metric, then you actually see that um, uh, you, you actually have this decay. The right hand side, this decay. So the so the metric, after using this diffeomorphism, uh, it converges to the cone metric at a polyamber rate. So this is a very uh, simple but very important example that I want everyone to keep in mind. So um, before I uh, move on to more examples, I want to talk more about this asymptotically conical Calabian manifolds. So instead of give you uh, a definition written in words, I want to give you this picture. So you have the manifold on the left-hand side and the cone on the right-hand side. So on the manifold, uh, it's a Calabian manifold. So it has uh, the Ricci flat care metric, the complex structure J, the, the holomorphic volume form, uh, capital omega. And on the Calabian cone, it also has the corresponding data Omega zero, J zero, uh, capital Omega zero. So, so the the manifold being AC means that there exists a diffeomorphism from uh, from the cone uh, to the manifold, but this diffeomorphism is away from the the cone point, such that if you pull back the metric and the complex structure and the holomorphic volume form. And you compare it to the the, the data on on the cone, then um, it should converge to the the cone data at a polynomial rate. In all in all orders, so this case the order of uh, the differentiation. So um, so I will go through uh, major examples very quickly. So um, in complex two, two dimensions, we have ALE hypercalar four manifolds. So these are AC Calabial two folds asymptotic to um, the, the quotient singularity C2 mod by a discrete uh, subgroup gamma. And these uh, ALE hypercalar four manifolds are uh, classified by Kronheimer in the late 80s using uh, twisted theory. So all such manifolds are um, are small resolutions of um, C two mod by gamma. And and you have uh, and and 
and in higher dimensions, we have uh, the more general AC calabial manifolds. Um, I should say that AC calabial manifolds are a very important class of examples of calabial manifolds with maximum volume growth. So these uh, um, these AC calabial manifolds they have uh, this very explicit. Um, structure because you have this you're given this diffeomorphism from the cone to your manifold and you you, you want the, the convergence rate of all the data to be polynomial so uh, it's a very uh, this is a very detailed definition and only very recently these manifolds are classified by uh, Colin and Hein so they 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 put a paper on the archive last year and what they prove is the following so they they show that every AC Calabia manifold is obtained as resolutions of smoothings of Calabia cones. And they can also um, classify the Calabia metrics, not just the manifolds, but also the metric. So the metric um, in its care class is up to diffeomorphism given by a, a certain gluing construction uh, pioneered by uh, Tian and Yao. So you, you actually, you can construct the diffeomorphism uh, uh, you can identify the diffeomorphism. You can identify the the spaces, and then you can sh you can classify the Calabria structure on these spaces. So this is a very satisfying uh, result. But uh, let's now move on to more uh, exotic examples of Calabria manifolds with maximum volume growth. So uh, Joyce. Uh, he studied uh, this QALE manifolds. So the QALE stands for quasi asymptotically uh, local, locally Euclidean manifolds. So these manifolds are resolution of CN mod by gamma, but now this gamma doesn't act freely on CN. So, so you will have singularities, um, not just at the vertex, but also away from the vertex. And more recently, um, there are examples of Calabia metrics just on C3, but with tangent cone given by C times C2 mod by C2. So these examples are um, discovered independently by Colin Rochon and Yang Li and Sikahidi. And actually, uh, Colin. Roshan and Sikahidi, they, they have more, um, more examples in higher dimensions. So they, they, they can actually construct many examples um, on many Calabria metrics on CN with tangent cone C times CY, C of Y, where C of Y is a, is a lower dimensional Calabria cone. So, um, because we have, uh, because in the presence of non isolated singularities, we know that um, the asymptotic conical calabials are not all of the calabial manifolds with maximum volume growth. And the reason is because uh, if you go back to this picture, then you, you require that away from the cone point, you can actually identify the cone with the manifold. But if the cone itself has non-isolated singularities, then there can never be such different morphism. So, so, so the, these three examples uh, tell us that there are many, many more uh, Calabria manifolds with maximum volume growth. And we, we probably need uh, more, um, we, we, we probably need more like useful tools in analysis to study them. So uh, let me mention my own result. So, um, so based on Sikakidi's construction, I constructed a new family of Calabria metrics and it's parameterized by this uh, B, where B is a non-negative number. So, so these metrics, uh, they, they live on C3 and they have tangent cone C times A2 and infinity. And I, I showed that if, 
if um, you have two different Bs, then the corresponding metrics are distinct in the sense that there do not exist a automorphism on C3 and the, and the scaling constant C such that these two metrics can be related by this automorphism and the scaling. So they are uh, these, these metrics are actually this, uh, different metrics. And on uh, the, 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 like, like why we expected there are a non-trivial family of these metrics is due to um, a computation inspired by Donaldson's Swift theory. So using Donaldson's Swift theory, you can embed C3 into C4 using holomorphy functions. And these holomorphic functions are uh, polynomial growth holomorphic functions and they're uh, determined by the, the Calabria metric. And if you have a Calabria metric on C3 with uh, tangent on C times A2 and infinity, then you can cook up um, a sequence of embeddings giving you um, uh, this embedding from C3 to C4 where the image is given by Z plus uh, a linear term in X3 plus x1 squared plus x2 squared plus x3 cubed equal to zero. So if you discard the, discard the first two terms, then and then th these are, this is just the defining equation for the A2 singularity. But the point is that um, this, this, this B, you cannot determine it. So you, you expect there is actually a non-trivial family of Calabria metrics with this tangent cone and infinity. And uh, perhaps I, I will skip the, the, the details of the construction. So uh, let me just mention that um, because now we have a non-trivial family of Calabria metrics on the fixed space, it makes the classification of uh, Calabria manifolds with maximum volume growth uh, more complicated. Uh, before I move on, any questions? Okay. Uh, maybe then, just then... a quick question. So mm -hmm. um, I was wondering, is this really tailored to, to this type of singularity or... or... Uh, would it be possible to also consider some slightly different ones? Um, you, you mean the construction? Yes. Particular yes. Construction? Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, so I think it works for any AK singularity. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. K larger than two. And in like when you, uh, my expectation is that when you increase K, then you get a higher dimensional non-trivial families of Calabria metrics. Ah, so so your parameter so, would be maybe B one and B two uh, each. Yeah. Oh, so sorry. for example, when when you consider A three, then uh, the last term here it, it will be x three to the uh, to the fourth, and then you should have a lower term. Uh, you sh you should have a uh, what, what would you call it? Uh, a quadratic term in x three, uh -huh. and then you can also vary the coefficient in front of the quadratic term in, in X3. And, and yeah, mm -hmm. and then you get more uh, Calabria metrics. Mm, okay, this is interesting. Uh, thank mm -hmm. you. Thank you. So now uh, that, let me move on to uniqueness results. So uh, first of all, it's uh, this very, very um, inspiring result by Colin Hahn. So they, they classify all the asymptotically conical Calabria manifolds. And uh, in a slightly more general case, so uh, Gan Liu in, in, two, uh, in 2021, he shows that a Calabria manifold with maximum volume growth and a smooth tangent cone and infinity. So this uh, smooth tangent cone and infinity is uh, in, the, in the assumption. So uh, it is a 
trapping resolution of the smoothing of a clavial cone. So it, it, it is the, the same story as in the AC case. So you can actually identify the space algebraically. You you first you smooth the you 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 partially smooth the the clavial cone and then you take the resolution. And uh, uh, I should mention that um, before the um, oh, okay, I'll just I'll just jump into this very recent result. So last year, uh, uh, may, maybe uh, may I ask a question. Mm -hmm. So what's the distinction between the result of Conlon Ein and uh, the result of U? Uh, so the distinction is that um, here we assume that the clavial manifold has maximum volume growth and the smooth tangent cone and affinity. So um, I think you can construct a diffeomorphism from the cone to the manifold. But the convergence rate, you don't know if it is uh, polynomial. OK, thank you. Mm -hmm. So but but the next result um, bridges the gap between uh, maximum volume growth and uh, AC clavial manifolds. So uh, last year, uh, Song Sun and Jason Zhang show that a clavial manifold X with maximum volume growth and the smooth tangent cone uh, C of Y and infinity is automatically AC. So they can actually construct a diffeomorphism from the cone to your manifold. And they can show that under this diffeomorphism, the, the manifold metric actually converges to the cone metric at a polynomial rate. So, um, so this is done. Um, I think it, it follows from the general strategy of Donaldson and Swin. So in the, the paper by Donaldson and Swin, they show that uh, first this X, you, you, you can use holomorphic functions to map this X into some large CN, and then you, you, you contract compact subvarieties. And then you can degenerate the image inside CN into the weighted tangent cone, and that is this W. And then you can use another C star action to degenerate W to the actual tangent cone and affinity, that is CY. So you, uh, in Donaldson's one, they, they show that there exists such two-step degeneration. So in this paper, um, Song Sun and Zhang show that um, actually this, this intermediate step is already isomorphic to the cone and affinity. So, so by showing this, they can actually show that uh, your Clavia manifold with a smooth tangent cone affinity is actually AC. So what's nice, uh, let me just give you an example, like why uh, this is very nice. So if you combine the result of Colin and Hein and uh, Sun and Zhang, then you can show that uh, the stencil metric that I just mentioned before is the unique Calabria metric on the smooth f on quadric with the tangent cone on A1 at infinity. So you, you, fix, you, you fix the space that is the smooth f on quadric and you fix the tangent cone that is the, the, the singer f on quadric. And, and then you can show that the, the metric that is that has this type of tangent cone must be unique. So th these are um, so so this is this is the story of AC Calabria manifolds. But um, in the singular tangent cone case, uh, Sikukidi proved that. Um, so he uh, re re recall that he constructed. Uh, a bunch of uh, actually infinitely many Calabria metric on CN. Um, in particular, he constructed a uh, Calabria metric on CN with tangent cone C times A1. And this is also done by uh, Colin Roshan and other people in, in Yangli. 
and he uh, Sikihidi actually showed that all these metrics they are um, they are the same up to biomorphism and scaling. And the difficulty in the in in this case um, comparing to the AC case is that on uh, detention plan infinity has non isolated singularities, and this imposes extra difficulties in analysis. So um, let me let me just skip this. Oh, wait, let me try to skip this. Okay, uh, so let me. Okay, I'll just go very quickly about this virginity of metrics. So let's consider a Calabian manifold with maximum volume growth, and suppose that we want to deform the metric. So we we make a new metric omega prime. Um, given by omega plus uh, d bar of a function. And suppose that uh, this metric has the same volume form and same tangent cone and affinity. So, it, so that means this, this phi must satisfy this complex margin per equation. And heuristically, if you want your tangent cone and affinity to be the same, then this potential must grow uh, at the subquadratic rate. Then if you want to show rigidity, then it means that this uh, DD bar of phi is equal to zero. So um, you can study this rigidity problem by uh, blowing down your manifold. So you want to use the information of the tangent cone and affinity. So you blow down the manifold, you consider the sequence of unit ball, that is uh, the ball of radius two i, and you scale down the metric by uh, two to the minus two i. And you also scale down the potential. Uh, so this phi i is two to the minus two i times phi. So because you have this subquadratic assumption, this phi i will become very small. So the, the new metric omega i and the potential phi i will again satisfy this complex modular pair equation. And if you rearrange this equation, you, you use the binomial theorem to expand the right-hand side, you can uh, re rearrange it as uh, Laplacian of phi i is equal to like big O of d bar of phi i squared. And if you have certain, some kind of regularity, so this is the non-rigorous part, a uh, step of the argument, then you can bound this dd bar phi i by phi i, which is uh, very small. And uh, suppose you want to take the limit of uh, phi i, then you want to normalize phi i so that um, the, the subnorm of phi i is equal to one because you want to get a non-zero non limit. So you define this vi, then uh, this vi will satisfy a uh, Laplacian of VI is equal to something very small. So that means this VI almost satisfies the harmonic equation, uh, Laplace equation. That means phi is, uh, VI is almost harmonic. So from this uh, the, the simple argument, um, it is possible to show that um, if you have a harmonic function U, which grows uh, subquadratically, then it, we, we should get that. If you, you if you know the rigidity, then we should get that uh, DD bar of U is equal to zero. So uh, that inspired the, the following result. So uh, that X omega be a Calabian manifold with maximum volume growth. Suppose that U is a harmonic on X and it grows subquadratically, then U must be the real part of a homomorphic function. So in particular, uh, U is uh, pretty harmonic. So this generalizes uh, the corresponding results of Conan and Hein. So they, they proved this result in the AC case. And already observed by Conan and Hein, um, this result must be false without the maximum volume growth uh, assumption. So the counterexample is the top-up space. 
And, and uh, to prove this result, I actually um, established the, the following um, gradient estimate for harmonic one forms. So that this add up be a harmonic one form. So that means this uh, Hush Laplacian operator acting on eta is equal to zero. So this is on, on both. So um, for any delta greater than zero, there exists a constant C depending on this delta and the volume lower bound of the ball of, um, of radius one and the two-sided Ricci curvature bound such that, that we have this following inequality. So you can bound the D at a square and D star at a square by at a square in the L2 sense. And let me mention that this estimate is established by um, a limit space argument. So, so we, we actually do a contradiction argument. So we, we blow down the manifold and and then we, we we take the we we take the limit and the limit is the cone and and this this type of inequalities should hold on the the cone and infinity and that's how we uh, get this result and um and that's uh, the the previous result is the linearized problem of the rigidity uh, problem of math Calabria metrics. So um, with Sikahiti, um, I proved the following. So uh, that again, X and Omega be a club Yaman with maximal growth. And suppose that Omega is DD bar exact. So Omega is given by a, uh, it, it's given by DD bar of a function phi. So in particular, X is in smooth affine variety. And suppose that Omega plus ID bar Q is an Arikalabia metric such that it has the same volume form. And suppose that um, this function U grows, grows subquadratically, then D bar U is equal to zero. So again, this generalizes the work of Colin and Hein, uh, where they prove the AC case. And uh, in in their case, they, they don't assume the DD bar exact uh, condition. So um, uh, probably an overkill, but this is a very uh, a quick application. So you can actually show that uh, the using this result, you can show that the Calabria metric on CN uh, with tangent cone C times A1 and infinity. So these metrics are constructed by Conan, Roshan, and Yangli and CKD. And you can use this result and uh, the simple construction to show that uh, the, these metrics are actually uh, invariant under the anti-holomorphic, uh, sorry, this is So uh, what's nice uh, if we know uh, this omega CN is on is invariant under anti-homomorphic involution um, because we can show that uh, the the fixed point locus L. So we identify CN as an affine hypersurface inside CN plus one given by this equation, and then we can take the the real points of this uh, hypersurface. So if you if you can show that this um, omega CN is invariant under the anti-homomorphic involution, then you can show that this L is a special Lagrangian submanifold inside uh, CN under this metric. Okay, um, so this is uh, a little bit te technical. So I want to tell you a little bit about the proof. So the, the proof follows from the, the following um, uh, DK est estimate argument. So, um, so the DK estimate says the following. 
So there exists a constant alpha and lambda depending on the Calabial cone and affinity, such that if um, epsilon is very small and uh, this U satisfies uh, the complex one pair equation on, on the ball, on the uni ball, and this U is very small. And furthermore, this uni ball is, is very, it, it looks very, very much like the, the, the cone. So this is the, the gromer hartzog distance. So if epsilon is smaller than B, P1 and B01, they look more and more similar to each other. So supposing you're, you're in this uh, setting, then you can find another potential U prime on the ball in the manifold such that uh, the difference of the new potential and the old potential is poorly harmonic. And furthermore, the new potential uh, actually uh, decays faster than the old potential. So this lambda is a number smaller than one. So, so on, on a smaller scale, uh, this U prime actually decays. So this is the, the, the decay estimate. And the, the, the proof of the, the rigidity result is to uh, iterate this decay estimate uh, infinitely many times so that in the end, um, we can show that this U prime converges to zero and the original U uh, is already pretty harmonic. So, um, uh, we should expect this decay estimate to hold because uh, this actually holds when uh, your manifold BP1 is already the, the cone itself and U is a harmonic function. And, and why is that true? Because on the Calabial cone, you can, uh, you can decompose your harmonic function into, um, you can do this spectral decomposition so you can write your harmonic function into uh, a sum of homogeneous harmonic functions. And if you want to want to uh, decrease or increase the decay, you can just subtract the lower terms so that it, uh, it will decays faster. And because the, the Laplace equation is the linearization of the complex modern pair equation, um, we should expect this result to hold at least when the manifold is very close to uh, the cone. Um, can I ask so, a quick question? Mm -hmm. So, uh, um, is is this the point where where you you really are using the maximum volume growth uh, hypothesis, or right, or, right? Uh, so, yeah. for to 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 obtain this kind of decay estimates, then. Um, so, actually, this decay estimate is a local. Uh, it, it's a local statement. Ah, uh, right, right. Oh, right, yeah. but yeah, but, but to iterate it, then maybe. yeah, to iterate, you you want to you want to look at bigger and bigger balls in your manifold and you want to scale it down, but you want to have a uniform volume bond when you scale down the, the balls. So, so that, mm -hmm. that's where you really need the maximum volume growth assumption. Uh -huh. Okay, yeah, I see, mm -hmm. I see. Thank you. Mm -hmm. So um, so the, the difficulty in proving this kind of result is that, um, so the, the, the cone CY, um, uh, re recall that it, it, it may have not isol isolated singularities. So, so, so not just at the vertex, but uh, maybe along a, a line, the, the curvature will blow up. So uh, to actually model U by a harmonic function, so uh, the, the, this U is the solution to the complex margin pair equation. But we want to say that this U is really just, um, it, it's, you can model it by a harmonic function. Then we, we need to show that this U is small. If, if this U is small on, on the ball away from the singular set. So 
And so this means that if U is small away from the region where the curvature is very large, then U must be small on, on half the ball across the, the, the singer set. So this kind of estimate is called a non-concentration estimate. And this is where we need uh, the DD bar exactness condition, because in order to prove this kind of non-concentration estimate, we need to construct suitable uh, barrier functions. And this is in inspired by uh, the uniqueness paper of uh, Sikahidi, where he proved that the Calabian metric on Cn with tangent cone C times A1 and infinity is unique up to biohomorphism and scaling. So um, in the end, I want to cover um, something that I want I want to know in the future. So, so in my paper, uh, in my preprint, I I, I refine the conjecture of Sikihidi, uh, and this is um, this is also inspired the the examples that I constructed. So I, I want to sh I want to show that up to scaling and biomorphism. The space of Calabria metrics on C3 with tangent cone C times A2 infinity is parameterized by um, all the non negative numbers. So, uh, this conjecture already appeared in the, the paper of Sikihidi, but um, I, I showed that uh, uh, this, this, this must be the parameter space. By, by doing the calculation more carefully. So, um, so I want to mention some heuristics behind why there is a non-trivial family of Calabria metrics asymptotic to the same tangent cone infinity. So, so this is due to the fact that uh, there exists a one parameter subgroup of homomorphisms of the cone C times A2. Um, and here you, you can embed C times A2 into C4 as an affine hypersurface. And you can also embed uh, the hypersurface uh, XB uh, I mentioned before. So, so XB are biomorphic to C3 and there are uh, you can view XB as uh, the smoothing of C times A2. So, so this one parameter subgroup of holomorphisms, uh, they, they don't fix the, the hypersurface XB. So this is a very, very naive uh, guess why there is exactly one parameter family of uh, metrics asymptotic to the same tangent cone infinity. But uh, in, in the paper by Swin and Zhang, they formulated a more sophisticated conjecture involving the, uh, uh, what they call a negative variation. So this, this V, uh, which is given by uh, negative D omega, where D omega is uh, like the, the, the gross rate of a homomorphic function. So, so it's defined using this formula. So basically, this formula extracts the, the degree or the gross rate of a homomorphic function if the homomorphic function has a polyamor growth. So for example, you, if you plug in R to, the, R to the K, then you should get K. So, um, so they, in, in their paper, they formulated a, a bunch of conjectures and and one I think one that's worth mentioning is they conjecture that uh, in the DD bar exact case, if one fix a poly stable negative valuation, then the map from the space of Calabria metrics uh, on the manifold with uh, with which gives the the same negative valuation v to the space of compatible Calabria cone metrics is bijective. 
So if you look at uh, uh, the above more naive conjecture in, in this particular case, you have uh, one parameter subgroup that moves, uh, that, that fixed the cone, but moves the hypersurface XB. Then if you, if you fix the Calabial cone metric on the, on the cone C times A2, and you, you apply this one parameter subgroup of polymorphisms, then you, you get a one parameter family of Calabial cone metrics. So on the manifold side, it, it must have a family of uh, Calabial metrics asymptotic to um, the same uh, the, the same metric and infinity. Yeah, I should say I should say that this is very technical. And um, but I think uh, just proving this special case on C three, uh, we need uh, more uh, insights in analysis for for showing the existence of uh, Calabria metrics and uh, to 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 uh, eventually classify them. I think this is a, a very nice topic that's worth um, studying. So uh, finally, um, let me mention uh, very quickly that the study of Calabian manifolds with maximum volume growth is deeply related to singular Kira Einstein manifolds arising as non-collapse non limits of polarized uh, Kira Einstein manifolds. So one example that um, that's very nice is uh, you consider a quintic threefold with one other point. So you can smooth it because it's a hypersurface. So you you get a a, a family of uh, Calabian manifolds, smooth Calabian manifolds converging to this uh, x zero. And a remarkable result of Hein and Swen show that uh, near the nodal point. The singular Calabria metric on X zero is asymptotic in all orders to the standard cone metric on, on the A1 singularity. And this is a very explicit uh, Calabria cone metric. And using this uh, information, uh, one can perform a gluing construction to show that uh, every nearby smoothing of X zero contains a special Lagrangian vanishing sphere. And let me mention that uh, this result by Hein and Sun uh, was generalized by myself and Sikahidi last year uh, to the Kara Einstein case. And, and we also allowed um, uh, non isolated singularities. So, in their case, they, they can only work on uh, cones with isolated singularity at the vertex. But in our case, we can work on any Calabial cones. And uh, Finally, let me mention that uh, uh, Yang Li he 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 performed a gluing construction to to get a Calabria metric on the collapsing Calabria threefold, which is a K three vibration with nodal fibers. So the construction, uh, roughly speaking, away from the nodal fibers, the metric is modeled on the semi reshifat metric. Where near the nodal fiber, the metric is modeled on uh, this omega C three which is the Calabria metric on C3 with tangent cone uh, C times A1 infinity. And I think this is, uh, this is the reason why Yang Li, he first studied uh, this metric on C3. And, and similar to, to the quintic threefold picture, I believe that um, uh, this screwing construction by Yang Li could also produce more interesting examples of special Lagrangian submanifolds. And okay, thank you very much for your attention. Thank you, thank you very much. Uh, I think it's are there any questions or remarks? Uh, yeah, one question. You hear me? Mm -hmm. Uh, yeah, you you mentioned that your the metrics you you construct are not uh, biholomorphic to each other. Mm -hmm. 
Uh, is there any chance they are diffeomorphic to each other, or you you let you rule this out as well? Um, that that's something that I never think about before because I I want to fix the complex structure. Uh -huh. But yeah, I, I don't know. I don't okay. know if they are yeah diffeomorphic to each other. Okay. Might be diffeomorphic at infinity, something. And what? Frederick? Uh, yes. So um, to, to come to come back to your your first result uh, to distinguish this uh, Calabria metric in your family. Um, mm -hmm. So you, you said uh, you. To distinguish them, you use that they induce map uh, from the Donaldson theory, and then these map are uh, dependent on the metric, and then you you see that the map are different. That's the way you distinguish the metric. Um, actually, this is the like the motivation that to to construct such metrics. So, um, I mean, like to construct on the the family of metrics, I write on c3 as the hypersurface xp and then i can i can look at uh, the map from c c4 to c by projecting in the z direction and that will give me a vibration and i can model the vibration on uh, like in in different regions i can model on uh, the vibration using on uh, using the Sorry, either the co-metric C times A2 or uh, C times the smoothing of the A2 singularity. So, I, I mean, the Donaldson swing theory tells you that there, there could exist a family of uh, Calabria metrics. Okay, so but, so, but uh, then uh, could you say a word of how you can distinguish uh, omega b and omega b prime uh... mm -hmm. so so the way i distinguish them is um i so i i compare the distance function with uh say the function z and 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 i show that the limit uh with respect to one metric uh, with actually with respect to any metric should be should be one and and if you compare the defining equations, so actually I construct the metrics on different hypersurface hypersurfaces, and and on each hypersurface I I I have a Calabria metric omega b, and then I I, I can look at uh, say this homomorphic function, like like compare it with the the distance function, and I show that the like if you say if you divide z by the the distance function, then if you take the limit uh, as as your point goes to infinity, then this should give you one, and then um I think so that that gives you a normalization of uh, the function z uh, with respect to each metric, and using that you can you can show that uh, if um, if they are really, if two metrics are really um, up to scale, scaling, they are bihomorphic, then uh, it, it will eventually force uh, this B and B prime to be equal. Yeah, th thank you. Okay, there's an extra question of Percy Carceres. Uh, sorry. So I want to know about uh, some results of, for the A3. Singularity, maybe mm -hmm. there are. Uh, or uh, other AD singularity. ADE singularities. Uh -huh. I think over here. Uh, are, you, are you talking about this ALE hypercare for manifolds? Uh, in your explicit uh, construction of the metric, you in your conjecture you you try to to 
about some singularity like A2, but uh, I I want to know if you have some idea to for the other IN singularities. I, I think my construction should work for any AK singularities. Okay. I haven't looked at um, other AD singularities. And for ex exceptional singularities, it's not no, it's, it's very different history. Uh, sorry, can can you say a little bit more? For uh, for the exceptional singularities, is is a very different history. Exceptional singularities. See in the Dupont Dupont cl classification. Mm -hmm. So there is yeah. I think um so I I, I try to think about like say you could classify uh like in three dimensions like uh all the clavial manifolds with maximum volume growth, then I think already in three dimensions you have this KLT singularities that you can have very bizarre KLT singularities. And I think this C times uh, ADE type singularity is, is just uh, the simpler cases. Thanks. Sorry. I, yeah. Okay, so if there is no extra question, I suggest we thank the speaker a very last time for his very detailed talk. Thank you. Thank you.